Hi everybody, my name is Scott Laird and I am the orchestra director at the North Carolina School of Science and Math in Durham, North Carolina. I thought you'd like to know a little bit about how I am using my NS Design violins in an education environment, particularly this fall in our uh, pandemic uh, education environment, which has obviously been a real test for a lot of us music educators, musicians, people everywhere. Um, we were uh, uh, informed at the beginning of the school year that our school would be in a hybrid environment where about half my orchestra is on campus in class and the other half is spread across the state of North Carolina at their homes. And so I had to decide quickly how I was going to teach orchestra in that environment where half the group is on Zoom. Um, I decided pretty quickly that trying to conduct an orchestra and have that being a large factor in my teaching was probably not going to make sense. And so I decided that creating audio guides that students would be uh, able to play along with and learn their part and then record their parts individually so that I could put them together into a virtual ensemble would be the better tack for this particular fall. Fortunately, I have NS Design CR violins to work with, and um, these made the process significantly easier and, frankly, more enjoyable and just a much higher quality product than most of my colleagues that I'm, I'm watching working. Um, so let me tell you just a little bit about how I'm doing it. I've got two CR violins here. Um, uh, one is a CR5, and it's set up with NS Design D'Addario electric violin strings. Um, so we run from the high E down to the low C. My other one, my CR4, is set up with D'Addario octave strings, which gives me a whole nother octave below that I can work with. So I use the CR4 with the octave strings for recording cello parts. I use the CR5 for recording violin and viola parts. And then I do record my bass parts on a fretted bass guitar. And that allows me to just get a very, very clear articulation for all of the bass parts, which becomes the foundation for everything else. I record with a click track. The students can typically hear the click track, um, which becomes a big value in the classroom at this point. It's really important in this environment that students can really just hang with a metronome. And um, to be honest with you, that's really not part of the values of a regular orchestra, right? In, a, in an orchestra setting, you're, you're just filled with that kind of feedback loop of watching the conductor, reacting to the conductor, listening to the people around you, reacting to the sounds that you hear, the things that you see, even the bow direction of the people around you becomes a big part of the feedback loop. And in this virtual ensemble environment, it just really can't be. So why do I like to use these instruments and what benefit do they have for me? Well, here in my studio, first of all, these instruments have such a wonderful acoustic-like sound that um, honestly, my guide tracks that I create sound like I'm recording uh, you know, in a small concert hall. Uh, violin parts. down into the viola range. So I get that nice warm viola sound with this, um, quite acoustic in nature. And then when I move over to the octave strings, the D'Addario octave strings, I get really, uh, really great cello sounds. love the way these sound, especially on these um, guide tracks that I'm using. So first of all, tone is just fantastic. Uh, second of all, when I'm recording direct into Pro Tools, I can punch in and out very seamlessly, as opposed to when I'm working with a microphone, with an acoustic instrument, and I might have just kind of varying levels or kind of different positioning as I'm playing. I really don't have to worry about that all with the CR violins. Um, uh, I can also talk while I'm recording, which is a really great thing. Um, I sometimes count rests out loud. 
Um, remember, I'm reading bass clef while I'm playing the violin, so sometimes I have to just remind myself of note names <laughs> while I'm going through. It really is a test of your musicianship to play all five parts of a string orchestra uh, on violins, basically. So that's a, a great thing. Another thing that I love about these instruments, and they just pay great dividends in the studio, is the stable tuning. I can um, be recording, um, uh, you know, run up into my kitchen, which is just a few steps away for lunch, and come back 15, 20 minutes later, and the tuning is just spot on. And that's just really helpful for me. I can really count on the tuning with these instruments of, as being, you know, super stable. So that's really great as well. Um, uh, I, people sometimes ask me what else I'm using. I, I use the, um, I primarily for the low string parts, I use the Coda Joule Bow. It just gets that kind of nice, beefy cello sound. I just like the, the bite that I can get with this bow. And then when I'm playing lighter violin parts, like uh, we did some Mozart earlier in the year, um, uh, for those violin parts, I use my Coda marquee bow for that so I can get that light, beautiful, off the string sound that I'm seeking. So um, this this week I have been recording um, some William Grant Still, um, uh, the first piece that we're going to be working on when we come back to school in February will be Cumbia y Congo, the fourth movement of William Grant Still's Danzas de Panama. And so uh, I'll just give you a little feel for what that sounds like. This is Fairly rough, and, and I do want to say that when I'm doing these recordings, I'm not recording these for perfection. I'm recording these for a guide track. And in the end, I will um, provide my students with the, the piece with a click track going. I'll provide the same audio guide without the click track, and I'll provide each of the individual parts with the click track. So they can practice their own part alone. They can practice their part within the entire ensemble, uh, or they can play and practice with the ensemble without the click track. In the end, when they record their individual parts for the virtual orchestra, I'm really looking for them to record with the ensemble. So they're really hearing and demonstrating the nuance, the dynamics uh, of the full ensemble. That's a big part of a good virtual ensemble in this case. I will uh, provide this to the students uh, in full tempo, and then I also use a piece of software called the Amazing Slowdowner, where I can give it to them at 90% tempo, 80% tempo, and 70% tempo, so that they can learn it a little bit slower. But let me just play a little bit of this for you. So this is Cumbia y Congo. <laughs> So that'll give you a little bit of a feel for, um, for what I'm doing. Uh, I spend a lot of time here in my studio putting these audio guides together on the front end, and then on the back end when the students submit their individual parts, I spend a lot of time piecing those together as well. And I will tell you one other really uh, great thing that I like in that, in that I'm recording direct and the, and the tone is so consistent is if I make a mistake in my recording, uh, maybe a note's a little out of tune or, or something needs corrected, I can go in there and correct it in Pro Tools and nobody's any the wiser. It really definitely helps me out a lot. In the end, the kids submit their own parts to me. I piece them together back in Pro Tools and then I typically put them into Camtasia and uh, add some, some still photographs. Uh, I'm not doing a lot with video at this point. But I gotta tell you, I love my NS Design instruments. I think they're the exact right tool for the environment that we're in. And um, I hope that this has been helpful for you. And if I can ever uh, offer you any uh, guidance or help in your journey with NS Design Bode Instruments, just let me know. I'd be happy to do it. Everybody take care.